First of all, I want you to tell my viewers your name, a, a little bit about you, and how you got to be an artist. Oh, my name is Lee Braz Gold, G O L, but it used to be Braz Gold with a D. Why? Right? Why, why was it with a D? Yeah. Because that was what was on my birth certificate. Oh, okay. But I changed it legally. Okay, well, why would you change it legally to something else? <clears throat> well, the interesting, story. the interesting thing is I didn't change it to something else. Okay. I changed it to something that it originally was. Okay. Because later, after I made the change... Legally, I found out that I found the manifest from when my grandfather on my father's side came into this country, and it was spelled without the D. But that's not the reason why I changed it. The reason why, because I changed it before I knew that. I changed it because I had a, not a very good relationship with my father. Okay. And I wanted to differentiate myself. So I'm sort of, it was a way of saying I'm not like him. Wow, that's deep. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the reason why. But then later <coughs> on, as they say, I found out that. Isn't that something? Right. Wow. God was all in there, wasn't he? <laughs> well, who knows? Uh, my father always said, but there were two things my father said. He said that his father had told him that, our name was a different name in the old country. Um, and, and where's I, the old country? The Ukraine. Okay. So I said to my dad, well, what did your dad say the name was? And he said, he never told me. Which doesn't quite make sense. But the fact is that the change could have simply been that the immigration officer added a D. So the name was made different at immigration and the name in the old country was without the D. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one. Um, and the other thing, well, this is not about my father, but the other thing about my father was I would say to him, there got to be other brass goals in the world. And he would say no. And I'd say, well, that's impossible because you can't have a surname without having uh, other people with that surname. And he said, no, we're the only ones in the whole world. Wow. <laughs> and he was wrong. Uh, and, you know, took the internet to, to figure that out. <laughs> but there are loads of us. And they're all, uh, a, a woman contacted me probably about 15 years ago. And she said, I suspect that we are related because my mother's maiden name or my aunt somebody was a Brazgold and it's an unusual name and I'm a amateur genealogist so oh, okay. I think that you know and we went to like the paper trail and nothing worked there was no way and I talked to my dad about it and I said I'd contacted by this woman she has a lot of information about where the family might have come from before the Ukraine does Latvia ring a bell no, never heard anything about Latvia. It can't be. But then we got genetic testing. And she asked me, she said, one of my cousins is going to be tested. And if you test, if you agree to test, we can find out if we are in fact related. And we are. I tell you, technology is something else. Yeah, that's really interesting. So one of the questions you asked is, how did I get to be an artist? Yes. And I think that the, you know, um, when I was a kid, I loved to draw. Um, when I was in probably grammar school, but late in grammar school, probably seventh, eighth grade, um, you know, kids want to be popular, so, or to excel in something that would give them cachet, you know, give them status. Be the man. <laughs> yeah, 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 give them, yeah, yeah. And, and drawing was, was, was one thing I could do. So I, be, you know, began to draw, 
Um, then when I got into high school, I think it was in my second year, I'm not sure, but I had a, a uh, I was in a special art class, I was okay, like in special class, mm -hmm. uh, advanced placement for artists. Okay. And I studied with a teacher whose name was Mr. Benson. And he said to me, you know, you're, he, he was like a mentor. And it was a very brief relationship, probably only an academic semester. But that was a very important influence because I did not get support from my family. I was wondering about that. Right? Yeah. It's like, well, you're going to be an artist? You know, you're not going to make money. You've got to make money. My mother was, you have to have a profession no matter what. Mm -hmm. you know, don't be like your father. You have to have a profession. What does she mean, don't be like your father? My dad was a route man. What was a route man back then? He delivered, uh, well, he, he, when, they, when my parents met, <clears throat> this is a long story. When my parents met, my father was working for his brother. Okay. And his brother owned a company that delivered, it was called White Flash. Okay. And they delivered bleach from oh. door to door. This okay, like, wow. This is a long time ago, okay. right? Um, and then later, long, much later, my father, um, we moved to Chicago, and my father got a job delivering juice from door to door. It's called um, Home Juices. Okay. And so we drive a truck. And eventually he got a franchise in the northern suburbs of Chicago. And once he got the franchise, two of the chemists from, uh, from Home Juice came to him and said, you know, you have a pretty good customer base, and we are not happy working for Home Juice. We'd like to work with you. We'll form a company. What do you think? Mm -hmm. So they went to, they did that. And my dad was, again, the route man. All right, now I understand what a rock man is. We, I remember back in the days when I was coming up, there was the milkman that delivered well, the milk. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's you know. This was the this was the milkman who delivered juice. He was, like, <laughs> he was like the juice man. So my mom was not happy with that because she wanted more status. She wanted more mm. money, and so she'd say, "You have to be a professional. You could be a doctor. You could be a lawyer. You could be blah blah blah." So in a funny way, I made a compromise. I am a professional, right? <laughs> but I'm also an artist. So that's a, that's, that's a blessing to be both a professional and an artist. Yeah, but as you said, and you're very right, uh, you know, I, I didn't want, when I was in my 20s, I didn't, I imagined being older, and I didn't want to work waiting tables. That's, yeah. not, that's not the life yeah. I wanted. Yeah. I wanted, you know, something that was more, more tangible. And I always worked part time. As a social worker, I always worked part time, until I decided I wanted to become a clinician. And in order to do that, I needed to work full time for X amount of time, under the supervision of a licensed clinical social worker. So then I went to work full time. And I worked there for four years. So how many years have you been? Been what? A, a, a social worker, licensed, clinical. Clinical? I don't, rem I don't really remember. Uh, probably around eight years ago. So what do you like about it? I like, uh, you, know the, you know the work I do in terms of, you know, the drawing right behind you? You know the no. Well, you, you know the whole story about Hidden America. Where no. I, okay. In 1984, was it 84? I have all the dates. 83, 84. In, in the early 80s, I began writing to people who placed ads in personal columns. And I, you see, you see that over there, the black and white above. Picture? Yeah, the black uh -huh. and white and with all the faces. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's uh, called uh, Significant Others, and it was a pictorial autobiography of 
everyone I knew. Okay. Okay. Um, and I liked it very much. And all those, all those drawings were based on photographs I had taken of those people. So I had like 247 photographs, all headshots. I assembled them into this wow. drawing, right? Okay. When I finished it, my question to myself was, this, there was something very, very fresh and original and, and it just very lively. And was, was, I, was I drawing, was I capturing these people as well as I did because I knew them and I was adding something about what I felt about them mm -hmm. or was I solely basing it on the photograph without adding anything. Okay. So I decided, well, to, an experiment, to experiment with that, I should try drawing people I don't know and see if I could capture them in the same way. And then I thought, well, there are two ways I could do that. One was I could go to a thrift shop and get a yearbook. Mm -hmm. And then all, you know, the back pages of the yearbook, they have the graduating class and all the headshots of all the people. So I could base drawings on that and see if I could capture those people. Or I, <laughs> or I could write to people who place ads in personal columns and say, send me a headshot and I'll draw you and blah, blah, blah. So I decided against the yearbook because the yearbook photographs were taken by a photographer and the photographer already had a point of view. Mm -hmm. So would I be drawing what I saw or would I be drawing through the perception of another person, the photographer who photographed the person I was drawing? I didn't want to do that. I mm -hmm. wanted to be the direct right, which in a way doesn't make sense because if I was... <laughs> which had your own eye the way you saw it, like you said. Well, no, 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 but I mean someone took the picture. In other words, if I wrote to someone who placed an ad in the personal column, I have no guarantee that... They weren't doing selfies then. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's someone true. else was taking their pictures, yeah, true. right? So I was still dealing with someone else's point of view about that person. Mm -hmm. But anyway, long story short, I started, I, so I was looking at magazines that were very like The Village Voice, New York Review of Books, okay. New York Magazine, and these these uh, none of those publications had photographs of the people. It would just be the ad. Just okay. the ad, right? So I had no idea what those people might look like. Anyhow, after about three months of writing to people from those magazines or those uh, whatever, nobody, nobody, and nobody wrote back. So I said, well, that's not going to work. I need to find publications where people have photographs of themselves, so there are. So I know they're not shy about being photographed. Victoria and oh, her ad, her ad was in a magazine. It was in a. Um, it was a like a tabloid. It was like a newspaper, um, and uh, she was a dominatrix mm. asking for slaves. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote to her, <clears throat> and I had no idea what I was doing. I, what I, I said, just send me a headshot, I'll draw a picture based on the headshot, I'll send it to you free as a gift, and that's it, that's, that's all I want. Um, and I said, and, but I said, I would like to see the, the photograph of her, in the, it was called... Uh, Disciplinary action. That was the name of the newsletter. She was in makeup and she mm -hmm. was fierce, you know, smiling. Wow. You know, she did not look like a nice lady. <laughs> I said, I'd like to see a photograph of how you look when you shop for groceries. Wow, like night and day. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, about, and I had a P.O. box. About two weeks later, I get a manifold easily that thick from her and there's a letter and photographs 
Xerox copies of photographs and when you arrange them chronologically it looks like they start probably in the late 50s maybe and every decade and she's transformed it's like wow she looks this way in the 50s she looks this way in the 60s you know, it was in just a she's a cowgirl she's a gymnast she's a, a, a stripper I mean all kinds of you know it's like who is this woman? <laughs> so and and a photograph of her with groceries <laughs> And the letter was really interesting about, you know, um, very disjointed, very, clearly a very troubled woman, but an interesting woman. So I wrote back to her and I said, you know, um, there are a couple of people I've decided I would like to know a little bit more about, and maybe we can sort of work together and see where this goes. And we began to correspond, and we, we corresponded for over two years. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, she did not like writing, so she began sending me tapes. Okay. So it was not only that I was getting photographs of her and her, she was telling me about her life, but with the, there was background noise, so I could hear the birds and I could hear you know people coming into her. She lived in a trailer, um, and. So this, it got to be this very, very rich information about this person. And I did a drawing of her, um, and it was, that was the first in the series. <clears throat> um, but I didn't know at the time it was going to be a series. It was just a drawing of this woman from Florida. And in terms of, well, th that gets into other stuff. But anyhow, bottom line is, by then I was kind of hooked on this. This is really interesting. I can mm -hmm. write to people I don't know. They can tell me a lot about themselves. See, the social worker part mm -hmm. comes into it, and I can trans. I can take this information and use it to create portraits of people. Um, and that's what I did. So and then, I, then what happened is I started getting doubles. So I had two two Californias, I had two Floridas, and I said I have to find a way of putting a frame around this because otherwise I'm just going to be getting the same states over and over. It's not that interesting. Why don't I do one for each state in the Union? Mm. And that's the whole idea of Hidden America. So I'm writing to okay. people and, and I'm finding out about their lives. And, but it's, it's not, um, you know, and all of the, all, I'm not kidding you, all of the people I've written to, and we're talking more than 50, because it, there are 50 states, but there's some states that were double. Some people said I would like to draw my partner, you know, so there are more than 50. The bottom line is, of all the, those correspondents, there's one, one, who would I say led, led a hallmark kind of life, you know, the American dream, nice person, likes a vacation in Honolulu, uh, you know, a completely so-called normal person. <laughs> the rest were off the charts. Everyone, and, and then what happened, it's such a long story because it's thir it took 34 years to do this. Wow. But I began to work. Oh, it was gay men and IVD, uh, intravenous drug users. And the, the gay men, I would talk to men who would report 3,000 partners. So I was going to work, and I was hearing, a, you know, talking to guys who were, you know, stooping everyone in sight. <laughs> then come home <laughs> working with the sexual material, and it's like I couldn't take it. Mm. So I said, "Well, I better, I better go back to <laughs> go back to New York Magazine and mm -hmm. try again." Mm. And 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 I did, and I began getting. Oh, and then the internet, right? So I could go to sites like Match. dot com, and you're writing to people who look normal. I'm still telling you, of all the people, sooner or later. Something comes out of the woodwork. Oh, I didn't tell you that I like being whipped once in a while? It's like, no, you didn't tell me that.
you know. So that's why it's called Hidden America. Okay. Anyhow, that's the story. Wow. So that that's those that series of drawings, portraits has been my major work, um, and uh, so you know maybe yeah. Okay, questions. Okay, um, I I looked on your website and I seen some of the tiles you did in the subways. How did you get into that? How did, how did I you didn't get, get into that. Well, how did it get to you? <laughs> it was uh, the uh, um, Metropolitan Transit Authority has uh, Arts for Transit. Okay. And they ask artists to submit slides. Okay. And based on that, they select people to, um, when they have a, uh, a uh, job they want done, they go through the slides and they pick artists they think would be appropriate. They meet. They might have maybe, I don't know, 25, 50. And then they meet with a panel, and the panel narrows it down to maybe four. And I was, I was in that selection. And then we all get interviewed. It's a group interview. Um, and then we're in, interviewed by the panel individually, and I got the commission. That's a, that's, that's a nice little piece of resume there. <laughs> it is. Well, bef but before that... The um, before I got the Greenwich Village murals, there was another program called Creative Stations, and that was a neighborhood-based program. So they invited artists to work with <clears throat> a local organization that would provide administrative services, and with the artist proposal and the administrative services being or donated or volunteered by this neighborhood organization to put together a proposal for a subway station in the, in the area. So I put together a proposal for the Delancey Street subway station and it was a very limited budget. I think it was around a thousand dollars or something like that. And uh, so th that kind of put me <clears throat> in, um, <clears throat> it gave me a context, mm -hmm. so I knew the personnel at, at Arts for Transit, they knew my work, so it, it helped to get the, the larger, more permanent job. Okay, so you're an artist for the subways, we, murals. Um, mm -hmm. i also seen you have plates on your website. When I got the job for the Greenwich Village murals, it was um, the fabricator was a very very famous um, fabricator. They made toilets for Elizabeth Taylor, right? So they're so called high end. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they, they did such a terrible job. It was unbelievable. It was like I rejected the first job they did, and the MTA agreed with me. They said no. They did. They, they. It's really bad. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they this fancy company had to redo them, and they still didn't get it right. And I wanted to reject it again, and the MTA said no. We have to go with it. It's not perfect, but it is what it is, and we can't. You know. So I said to myself, Well, I've just got a commission. I got a lot of money, so. I never want to be in a position again where someone does a lousy job. I'll get my own kill and I'll learn how to do this myself. And that's what I did. And that's why you're going to get a handmade candle for your birthday. I know, isn't that more? <laughs> I have my cup already, so I thank God for that. Uh, I love my cup. I sit down when I have morning coffee and then I just reflect and I sit. I got a Lee original. <laughs> well, you need another one. And that's going to be awesome.
Thank you.